please subscribe to Face TV Africa and turn the notification on. Face TV Africa, Ejo, e subscribe, subscribe, eh, hete. Face TV. Oswobi. Their vision, tenacity, and leadership have left indelible marks on societies, industries, and nations. These men cut across several generations. But personally, I found inspiration in a remarkable individual closer to home, a visionary, a trailblazer, a courageous and determined entrepreneur, a professional par excellence. It was in early 1984, as a young graduate in the research department of the Central Bank of Nigeria, when I first heard of Otumba Shibomi Balogun, one bright morning on my way to work, I tuned on the radio and listened to the live interview he granted. During the hour-long interview, he detailed his life journey, his struggles to invest and own a financial institution against all odds, and how he eventually succeeded. He was just 50 years old at the time and was already fully accomplished. Why didn't we just honor the founder and chairman CEO of the bank who blazed the trail and made possible for the new generation banks like GT Bank to exist? Led by our MD, we invited Otsumba to visit and tour our facility. I can see Ai Ganaba smiling because we were there that day together. We laid the red carpet from uh, Adiyemala Kija to Otsumba's house, which was a stone throw. And the entire staff of Guarantee Trust Bank lined the streets. And when Baba came out of the house and saw the red carpet and us, he was so happy. The Otumba Toashe of Ijebu, the Ulori Omoba Akile Ijebu, and the Ashuaju of Ijebu Christians. He was an especial and consequential man. To liberally paraphrase a famous quotation attributed to Kalpuna, the wife of perhaps the greatest and most famous of all Roman emperors and generals at the time of his death. On the passing of most mortals, no comets are seen. However, the very heavens themselves blaze forth the death of princes. This is demonstrably the case with the sudden very painful and totally unexpected loss of the founder as he'll forever be fondly remembered. He and my late brother, Gwega Jadisimi, were friends from their early youth, but I first met him when he returned from the United Kingdom as a brilliant, dashing young lawyer having graduated from one of the most famous and prestigious schools in the world, the London School of Economics and Political Science, the LSE. He'd also been specially identified and trained as a parliamentary legal draftsman. That was the first of his first, because he was the first Nigerian to be so trained and was engaged in that capacity by the Western Nigerian regional government in Ibadan, the regional capital. I was, school, I was still in high school at the time, but very clearly remember being quite taken by his distinguished panache, savoir faire, and which set him apart from all his peers, even at that time. For most of us participating in these obsequies, 
the passing of Otumba Michael Olashumbumi Balogun, C-O-N, the Otumba Tuashe of Ijebu, Olori Omoba Akile Ijebu, and the Ashiwaju of all Christians was sudden and unbelievable. When someone is as great and accomplished, you hold them in a certain space of immortality. And even when death comes calling at 89, you feel that life still owed them more or that they still had more to give. What I realize is that you cannot calculate in years a life spent building new heights in banking or amassing the sort of influence and stature that Otumba Balugun had. When I missed his 89th birthday open house, I did not bat myself because I believed that I would be at the major event, which would be his 90th birthday, which was around the corner. The news is therefore hard for me to process, not because he died, but it's as if he is still here. Look around you and you would see the class and the no-holds-bad quality that he loved and which stood him out. They are still here with us. About 40 years ago, I was one of 10 lawyers that were interviewed by consultants to fill the position of company secretary legal advisor of a bank that did not exist. His beloved wife, Ulori Abimbola Adetutu Balogun, and his loving sister, Chief Olurenke Ronke Atere, his many siblings and their families whom he cherished, as well as his many friends, will miss this huge presence. May God comfort us all. Adieu, Grandmaster. Farewell, visionary. Man of great faith. Man of faith. Farewell, fierce warrior. Thank you very much. Oh, I want to do Risha. In commemoration of the remarkable life and contributions of Chief Otumba Michael Olashubumi, Ola Onipekun, Ola Oshewogwe. This tribute serves as a testament to his legacy as a visionary, a visionary business leader and dedicated philanthropist. Through his entrepreneurial spirit, strategic acumen, and unwavering commitment to societal development, Otumba Balogun shaped industries and transformed men. Today, we honor his exceptional achievements and remember his indelible mark he left on the hearts and society. His early life was to follow the footsteps of his father. They called him an entrepreneur. In Ijebuode, okay, he was. But he then took it out of Ijebuode, found his purpose, and he became unstoppable. He was a champion for education. Recognizing the transformative power of education, Otumba Balogun prioritized investing in human capital development. He established the Shubemba Logan Foundation, which implemented various initiatives to enhance access to quality education across the country, from scholarships to educational infrastructure projects. These efforts enabled countless aspiring young minds to pursue their dreams and contribute to national projects. He was a philanthropist and a social welfare personality. His philanthropic endeavors extended beyond education, encompassing healthcare, as we've heard, poverty alleviation, and social welfare. Through his foundation, 
is spearheaded impactful initiatives that aim to improve healthcare facilities, provide essential amenities to underserved communities, empower vulnerable groups, and support sustainable development projects in the country. His remarkable compassion and dedication to uplifting society touched many lives and created lasting change. Um, the Olori Abimbala Balogun, family and friends of Otumba. You know, I must let you know that Otumba passed on the 18th of May. On the 31st of May, I wrote a tribute. Nobody told me to write a tribute. So this evening is also about storytelling because his grandchildren are here, his children are here. And, and from when you tell stories, even the grandchildren get to know more about their grandfather. So why did I write a tribute? This hall has the creme de la creme of Lagos. You therefore know those people that it doesn't matter who dies, they will write a tribute immediately. You also know those who don't write tribute anyhow. And, if you, and because some of us write a tribute when somebody in our family passed, like when my father passed and it was published by, by this day. So when I wrote a tribute, and it was published in one or two papers. I gave it to the family. They didn't ask me to write a tribute. Today, they told me to come and give a tribute. So people asked me in Lagos, why did you decide this time to write a tribute about somebody that you never worked for? If you hear Otumba Pedro, at least he has relevance. He worked there. If you hear Fola Diola, he had relevance. He pinched some of his staff. If you hear... <laughs> <laughs> now, I mention that because, again, with this creme de la creme of Lagos, think about it. I started diabetes seven years after Otumba Balogun began, began FCMB. We were both merchant banks, investment banks. Now, let me challenge many of you. Who do you know that diabetes depends from FCMB? You'll be shaking your head. Who do you know that FCMB pains from IBTC? You'll be shaking your head. I have many secrets to reveal, but some of them, re re they reveal the greatness of the man. So you think it was a coincidence? Yes, but I'm one of those people that don't believe in coincidences. Let me tell you one or two things that brought us close together. In the tribute I published, I mentioned we first sat down properly for a lunch when he tried to get me to work for FCMB. And after a long discussion, we both agreed that it was not going to happen, but we became friends. Three other things brought us closer together, which, which I never told before today. One was that you, you cannot do banking without having problems once or twice with CBN, Central Bank. So once FCMB has some problems with CBN. I don't know who in CBN went to go and tell Otumba. Ah, there's something wrong with that fellow they call Atido. He said, why? He said, because Atido was in CBN, lobbying CBN, that their treatment of FCMB was incorrect. So Otumba called me and said, I said, thank you. The second location, there was a chartered institute of stockbrokers. There's what I would call either a miscommunication or a misunderstanding. But it was, it, it, was, it was important enough in the sense that Otumba knew what was discussed some years ago, one-on-one. -on -one. Another gentleman knew what they discussed, but they had different versions of the discussion. We were not there, we were the board members. But it was one of these things where it was white or black. So, Everybody was running around, what do you do, what do you do, how do you reconcile them? So I spoke to Otumba, about half an hour we spoke together. At the end of the discussion, I told, I told my colleagues, I said, you know what? No problem, nothing to worry about, it's all over. And they said, what do you mean? I said, it's very simple. I spoke to Otumba, says he will leave. 
I said, ah, why didn't you beg him? This, 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 we should go and beg him. So they started going up and down, begging and so on. I told them, hey, guys, you're wasting your time. Because he was not leaving because he was upset. It was a matter of principle for him. So as far as he was concerned, the institution was best preserved by him sort of surrendering himself and, and withdrawing, withdrawing from the scene. So I learned many things from Otumba. And look, all these ladies and gentlemen that want to come for microphone, let me just warn you now that, yes, I did a tribute. What I said there was different. Yes, I was on this video. What I said there was different. What I'm saying now is different. And if you call me 24 times, I'll say 24 different things because that's how great the man was. They're Please subscribe to Face TV Africa and turn the notification on. Face TV Africa, and your subscribe, subscribe, and hit it. Face TV. Who's